Hi, I'm Jack with Jack in the Net. Welcome to the latest video in how to speed up your WordPress website. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to use WP Rocket, the best, best caching plugin that there is for WordPress. Now, this is the plugin I used on my own website, jackinthenet.com, to go from these pretty damn terrible GT metric scores to a lot, lot better. So if you'd like to do the same, stick around and make sure to wait until the end of the video because I have three more top power tips for you on how to speed up your site. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, hit the likes, share with absolutely everybody, and let's do this thing. Okay, so the first thing we need to do for those of you who don't yet have WP Rocket is get it. So open up a new tab and head on over to jackinthenet.com forward slash rocket. That'll take you through to WP Rocket. Uh, you can obviously find out all about it here, see the amount of people already using it, massive, uh, all the amazing features, and of course, the bit we're interested in, the pricing. So for most of you, all you're going to need is one year of support and updates for a single website, which is currently $49. Quick note here, if you are watching this before Black Friday, it's currently about two weeks away, then I recommend you wait until Black Friday in order to make your purchase. There is an amazing discount coming out from WP Rocket. Uh, most I've seen from them before is about 10%. It's going to be a lot more than that, um, more than 25%. Uh, but I better not say any more, as I promise not to say until the actual day. So um, just a word to the wise there. But hey, if you're watching after it, don't worry, because this really isn't that much. Uh, I paid full price for this, and it's worth every penny. So do the normal stuff. Choose the license you want. Pop in your card details. Obviously, who you are. Uh, and then click on place order. So once you've been through checkout, you'll be redirected through to your accounts page and naturally you'll receive an email as well, which you can follow in order to come through to here. That'll show you your license details, when it's valid to, and obviously the option to renew when you get closer. You can always upgrade at any time, you'll only pay the difference, and you also can renew your license down here and you do get a discount if you renew it for a longer period, which is really cool. So. Once you've had a look through that, simply download the plugin. That'll appear down here for you in a zip folder. And then what you'd need to do if you haven't got it uploaded already is go on over to plugins and click on add new, then go to upload plugin just here. And then you can simply click and drag this on into the page. I've already got it, so I won't do it. Close that down. And then when you have activated it, you won't actually see it appear over here on the left. In order to find it, you need to go to settings, hover over this, and then you'll see that WP Rocket has appeared just down here. So click on that, and that brings you through to your dashboard where we were. So the first thing you'll notice is that you can easily revisit your account at any time with this button. And over on the right, we've got the quick buttons to purge the different caches. You can also preload the cache, which makes things quicker when viewing the website. Then over on the left here, you'll see our different tabs that we can go through to check the different options. So the cache tab, the first option you have is to enable mobile caching. I suggest you have this on, it'll make it quicker. You don't need this option on unless you're using a separate theme or plugin purely for serving up the mobile side of your website. Likewise, down here, you have the ability to have on the user cache, which if you've got different people accessing the uh, WordPress dashboard of different admin levels, it's quite good to have this on. You can then change your cache lifespan, which is basically how long it is between the cache being cleared automatically by WP Rocket. Then we have file optimization, which is the one most of you is going to be interested in. These are the sort of things that come up a lot when we're looking at GT metrics, Google page speeds, and all the rest of it. Now I know what you're thinking, Jack, you've hardly got any of these on. Well, no, I don't. And that is because I use this in conjunction with the SG Optimizer plugin. Because I use SiteGround's amazing hosting, and they are the best hosts, as I've said so many times before, I get their free SG Optimizer plugin. I have a separate tutorial on that. I suggest you watch it if you are a SiteGround customer or considering being one. And if you're not, what's wrong with you? You need to be. So these two work in conjunction. WP Rocket is the only thing that does work properly uh, with SiteGround's hosting. If you are using a different host, you wanna go ahead and switch pretty much all of these on. Just be careful when you are doing things like combining CSS files or combining JavaScript, because this can break the front end of your website, 
Before you do any of that, you should make a backup. Again, if you are using SiteGround, this is really simple because under your SiteGround site tools, you can come over to security, head over to backups, and although it will make backups for you automatically each day, you can simply name one and create a manual backup before you go making any changes. So these really are the common problems that you're going to face with speeding up a website, but these happen to be the settings that I found work best when it is in conjunction with the SG Optimizer. So just take a look at those and you can copy it over for your site. It was doing that that got me the immediate change on the GT metric score from being so low to so high. So I really do think that speaks for itself. And for anybody who is looking at this and thinking, well, I've got SiteGround, why would I need WP Rocket if this is the only setting you've got on? First of all, it isn't. As you're going to see in a minute, there are other things as well. But this alone makes over a second's worth of speed difference in loading. And in website loading times, a second is huge. Bear in mind that if a website hasn't loaded up in two seconds visibly to people, the majority leave and they don't come back. So speed is everything. This is one of those rare occasions where doing things quickly actually works, contrary to what women normally tell you. So <laughs> bear that in mind. Um, next up, we've got the media tab. So lazy loading, this is something I use WP Rocket for, I have it on all images and iframes and videos. I do have some YouTube videos on my website and I don't replace this with a preview image. I like to have the main video loading, but it will speed up a bit more if you have this on. So bear that in mind. I do also disable emojis because they can slow things down as well. And if you don't want people to embed any of your content or vice versa, then you can turn this off as well. Lastly, we have enable WebP caching. Again, I don't use this on here. I do it with the SG Optimizer. So if we click over to here quickly, coming over to front end optimization, this is where I have several of the options turned on. And under media optimization, you'll see that down here, I use this for WebP images, but I don't use it for lazy loading. Again, this is something that WP Rocket just does better, which is why I use it. Head on back over. Now, on the subject of media where we just were, you might be thinking about image optimization. That actually comes down here and it recommends Imageify, which is basically something that is also through the same company. I don't recommend this, however. There is a better image optimization plugin that you can be using. And if you'd like to know what that is, check out my video on the top 10 WordPress plugins that you should be using. Link in the description and I'll pop a card on the screen. But it's a free plugin that you can use with a premium upgrade if you get to that stage. So next up, we want to go over to preload. So activate preloading. This all helps in loading up the site faster for visitors. So have it on. You can also preload links. And this is one I normally do have switched on. I've just got it off at the moment while I'm doing some development. Down here, you've also got the ability to prefetch DNS requests and preload fonts. Just remember that when you make any additions to this to save your changes, otherwise it won't remember them. For most of you though, you probably won't need to be adding anything in, leave it at the default settings. That is the beauty of this plugin, there's not many changes that we need to make. The same goes for the advanced rules. You've got URLs that you never want it to cache, or cookies from certain sites that you don't want it to remember, and the same with agents. I'll be honest, I don't need to use any of these, so it would be a bit silly for me to talk you through them. However, if you do need help with any of these on WP Rocket, click over here and it gives you a nice walkthrough of what each and every single one of them does. This plugin works best simply out of the box, so there isn't really much that you need to worry about with this. Something that does need your attention though is the database tab, so let's take a look at it. Now, this is where it can clean up your site. This is the back end of the site, and you always want your back end clean because having some <laughs> sorry, I made myself laugh there. Um, having revisions and drafts and things can slow down your site. So old blog posts, things that you're not using, this basically picks them up. Also spam comments as well. If you haven't got any protection on your site, then you're probably gonna see this quite high. So this can get rid of them for you. Uh, all your expired transients, everything basically. You can schedule automatic cleanups or you can do it for yourself manually. So you'd save changes and optimize. But again, before you do this, there's no way to undo it. Make sure that you have a backup. So you can do that once again via SiteGround's backups. It's also good to have another backup plugin. And the best one for doing this is Backup Buddy. Again, if you're going to get that, go over to jackinthenet.com forward slash iThemes. 
Now they have a host of different plugins, ones for security as well, which I recommend, but the one that you're after here is Backup Buddy. Using this is super simple and with just a single click you'll be able to back up your entire website. When you've done that, come back here, optimize, and that's going to get rid of all of this unwanted stuff that's cluttering up your site and slowing it down. After that, we head on over to CDN, which is Content Delivery Network. WP Rocket have their own one, which you can buy, but I don't suggest this. I actually use Cloudflare. And the beauty of WP Rocket is that it integrates with it. So if we come on down here, you'll see you have the Add-ons tab. We click on here, and there's different things you can switch on. One of them is Cloudflare. So you can simply switch it on. That then brings up this option here for Cloudflare. That'll show you your API keys and account details. Now you can get those simply by heading over to Cloudflare. If you've not got it, again, it comes actually with SiteGround. You get free access to it. So under your speed settings in the site tools, you can go to Cloudflare. And again, I've got a separate tutorial showing you how to do that and where to find your API keys. So I will link to that for you, but it's those that you can take and add in here and that'll link it up. And I love this with WP Rocket because look, you've got development mode. So whenever I'm making changes to the site, I switch this on and then for three hours, it won't cache it with Cloudflare and then it'll automatically turn itself off. That's hugely useful. And then you've also got optimal settings. This one click of the button automatically sets all of your Cloudflare settings up for you to the optimum settings for speed. So this is one that I always have on. And again, it's such a big difference to those performance scores that you saw earlier. And when you want to clear your cache files, you can do it from just down here. Another great shortcut is just up here at the top of your WordPress dashboard, you've got the WP Rocket settings, and you can simply clear the cache from here or clear the Cloudflare cache. So this is Cloudflare. Looking back at the add-ons, you've also got your Google Analytics and your Facebook Pixel. Now, you should be using both of these on your site for tracking your performance. So I suggest turning both of these on if you are using them, because again, it's going to speed it up for you. Heartbeat control. This is really useful because to simplify it, WordPress sends a lot of data back and forth, especially with blog posts, and that is going to slow things down for you. So you can control the heartbeat settings with WP Rocket, or you can do it with SG optimizer. I've tried it with both and actually it gives you exactly the same result. So I've just left it on the SG optimizer. But if you want to do it on this, you can do exactly the same results. So then we have the image optimization we spoke about. Then you've got tools. This is so that you can export certain settings. So when you've got it all set up as you like it, you can export those. That's really useful if you have multiple sites and a multiple site license, because then of course you can simply import them, it means you only have to do this the once, and you can roll back to a previous version. And then we can enable Google font optimization, which is something I wanted to do, but have left on for this tutorial, because of course this is a one-time action. And after that, this button will be removed. So pop that on, that's gonna speed up your font loading. And then they do also have their own inbuilt tutorials on getting started, and there's a lot of documentation as well. So all in all, really powerful plugin, very simple to use, really clear and concise, and most of these settings you can use out of the box. And by all means, feel free to play around with turning these on as well. You don't need to take my word for it that these are the best settings to have when you've also got the SG Optimizer. Play around with them. Just remember to do those backups first, so that if you find you do switch something on and it actually makes it a bit slower, you can simply roll it back. And there we have it, folks. That is WP Rocket. Nice and simple, hugely powerful. Now, though, it's the three tips I promised you at the beginning on speeding things up even more. The first is to do with plugins. Now, I've mentioned plugins in previous tips before. You want to keep them to a minimum, but also deactivate them when they're not in use. Not all plugins need to be activated the whole time, especially ones to do with doing certain little tasks or optimizing your database. You might only need to use them once or twice a month, so only activate them while you're using them and then turn them off. That's going to declutter things. It's going to speed stuff up. Number two is to do with your images. Make sure to check out my top 10 plugin video to find out the best image optimization plugin, but also make sure that you are using WebP images. Okay, you can do that with WP Rocket or the SG Optimizer that I mentioned here, and make sure that you're lazy loading images as well. They take up so much space on a website, it's ridiculous. So make sure you do that. And then number three, most important of all, move your scripts to the footer. 
Okay, these really slow down your website. There's a simple plugin for it, it's completely free. So go and download that, move scripts to footer. It just works, there's no fancy settings, just turn it on and it does the job for you. Boom, that is more super speed for you. There's more tips like this coming your way, so please subscribe if you haven't already, like the video, please share it as well, that's really helpful, and of course, comment. I love to hear if you found this useful, and of course, any other requests for tutorials that you have. So, thanks again, and until next time, goodbye.